Hey friends, so I am back here with another book book review. <laughs> this time we're going to be reviewing Connecting with Your Ancestors, a practical guide for a living, living a destiny-driven life, second edition by Dr. Asani Brogan. I hope I'm saying her name right. And this is how the book looks. I love the cover. I mean, how's the saying go don't judge a book by its cover but that's what always gets me like if it's a nice cover I'm like oh what is this about and if if it's something that I'm like mm, I don't know unless someone reckon recommends it I'm like mm, I don't know but anyhow so this book was such an easy read um I was able to get it done in two days so I read half it's like a hundred and I want to say 76 pages so I read half one day and then the other half the next day and I really really enjoyed it I was wanting to keep like turning the pages and um, I was really hyped about it I don't want to like overhype it because for some people it might not be their jam but for me I thought it was like a really 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 good book um, I did if you look at the previous uh if you follow me and you've seen the previous video i did a review on another book that was pretty similar and um it was also an easy read and i think i got that one done in two days but this one here this one right here um i just loved it so much more i don't know why the other book just felt like it was trying to be like too like inclusive and things like that in my opinion and um this book was totally for us by us type thing but it was also inclusive because it, it anybody can read it um it was more geared towards the african-american experience but it can be for anybody who wants to reach out to their ancestors and things like that whereas the other book kind of tried to touch on like a whole bunch of different you know um cultures and different things and tried to leave it like too open and stuff like that that's kind of where it differed and then this one like i don't know she just wrote it like she's talking to you like she knows you like she just like she's your home girl and she's just trying to give you some advice that's how i felt it wasn't too like because it says doctor it wasn't too like professional or anything like that i just really felt like i was sitting there um speaking to like one of my friends and then putting me up on game like this is how you do it this is what you're supposed to do and i've had an ancestor altar since like probably 2020 and I know most of this stuff like I really really do but I feel like she just kind of broke it down a little bit more I really liked how she um went into like the importance um of doing ancestor veneration and how it like helps you and how it's a back and forth dynamic it's not a one-way street your ancestors are not genies in a bottle they can't just grant you every single wish that that you need but they want to hear from you they love you um and she's saying like there could be ancestors that you don't know like I mean that's obvious any of your ancestors could be working with you or helping you or trying to guide you but she's uh, in the book she's talking about um there's a big chance that whoever's helping you like you you did not know them in real life you may not have heard their name or anything you may not know anything of them but as you sit there and you um build this relationship you'll get to know them and you'll get to see these patterns and think about like why you are where you are in your life and that's that's one of the important things as far as like trying to do your ancestor veneration is to to help yourself in this lifetime right now and to help the people that come after you so I thought that was really important and really um just interesting and I also loved how I loved hate it how she was saying like because I know like a lot of stuff right now is just like if someone bothers you like you know f them distance yourself that kind of thing but she was speaking like within your family line like those are the people sometimes you need to help more even if they've done like horrendous things like maybe that happened to them maybe something terrible happened to them and we need to clear that little blockage so that it doesn't keep repeating and repeating and repeating and your kids don't have to deal with that or their kids or you know their kids kind of thing and so i'm like because I know that I'm very, very much so on, like, I'm not about to deal with you if um, you don't know how to act right, if you double-cross me. Like, I give people too many chances, I promise you. But I'm just, like, I'm not going to deal with that. And so she kind of puts it at a place of um, 
you know, maybe you want to see where that that is and if you can clear that line. But of course, if something is too unhealthy for you, then you're not going to like deal with those types of people. Um, and so with that, she also talks about dealing with um, those type of people on the other side because they could try to come through or just in general, like when you're doing spiritual work to try to be safe because different spirits can pop up and say peekaboo like I'm here and act like they're helping you or you're, they're your relative or whatnot and they're just not they're just some nasty um you know meddling type spirit but um I just wanted to do like a quick review I don't want to bore you guys or anything like that if you are tuning in but to me the book was amazing I would say um five stars for me I I highlighted the crap out of this book and I will be like going back to reference it and I will be trying to try some of her techniques to work with my ancestors and it also gave me just like a refresh where I'm like I need to get better with being on with my altar because that's one thing she says in there too is like don't just make your altar and have it sitting there like collecting dust and not working with your ancestors give them what you can don't don't like burn yourself out your aunt you are your altar in general you have your ancestors in your dna they're within you um first and foremost but you know your altar is just like a um a dedicated area for yourself that are your family members whoever that may be that you go when you sit and you spend time with your um with your you know ancestors who's who've crossed over and things like that so the point of that was just like don't just make an altar just to sit there and collect dust like really use your altar be it once a week um once a month every day a couple of times a week whatever it is that works for you make sure that you're just like being consistent make sure that you're keeping it clean make sure that you're keeping that relationship dynamic open just like you have different relationships with people here you know in our walking life um you can have relationships like that with different ancestors on the other side different spirit guides things things of that nature so this book to me was really jam-packed with lots of little tidbits of um of how to just get your altar up and running i i know i've seen other um like reviews i looked i look at reviews when i'm buying books and then i'm also been looking at reviews so that i can review and whatnot i try not to look at them too too heavy because i don't want to have other people's opinions in my head but i seen someone that was just like um they didn't really think it was that great or like um it was okay kind of thing and it may not work again for everyone this is more geared towards the african-american experience i know the person who gave it like a lower rating was not african-american you could see their picture on their profile and so um they may look at things differently but it still can have information in there for you to use um as they say take the meat leave the bones type of thing um it doesn't take away from it being a great book and then um I'm like trying to get something out but it keeps going as I'm talking but um so the other thing oh my gosh I feel like I'm like totally blanking but we're just gonna forget about whatever bottom line book was really good if you have the opportunity to buy it buy it support um a black business support a black, a black author a fellow spiritualist um and get to knowing your ancestors I think my point that I was going to make too now it came back is that like I said I've had my altar since like 2020 but there was still stuff in here that was very um like relevant to me things that I still needed to learn um not saying anything super major but just little little tidbits where it's like sometimes you get overwhelmed because you're trying to do this and you're trying to do that and she just made it simple like don't stress yourself out don't overwhelm yourself your ancestors want you you know they want you they want your time they want your energy not like in a negative way but they just want you they want to know that they're remembered they want to know that they're being thought of so don't stress yourself out about an altar kind of thing and so I thought that was great because sometimes I know I can personally get overwhelmed with trying to stress myself out and trying to do too much and you can't do this and you can't do that and blah 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 
And um, so like, even if you're new at this, if you don't have an altar yet, you're thinking about it, it would be a great book to read and just kind of see, is this for me or not? Um, and I know one thing in here that I have learned differently than she, than she said in the book was um, like, when you're married, you should be having your own altar separate from your spouse. And then your kids should have their own altars because they have different, um, ancestors because your kids would need both sides you know of the tree on their altar I was taught you're married your family they're your family now I know it's supposed to be like technically bloodline but I think people get too carried away with that kind of thing um I know the other book that I read on the last review said you can put anybody up there for me I kind of more so feel that way like especially with your bloodline I wouldn't put like friends or anyone on there unless they were just like like basically like a cousin or something type friend those type friends um but as far as like being married I'm married so my husband's family is now my family even though they're not blood related and then I was a child that I have a step parent and so I do have my I guess it would be step grandmother on my altar because she was my grandmother. She was with me since I was four. So why wouldn't I want to like honor her and, you know, like love her just as I would my other grandmother? Because to me, there's no difference um, just because we don't have the same blood. And then I have my blood grandmother from my like sperm donor side who wasn't in my life. And so why would I put her on my altar? I mean, people can do that. I don't know. However you feel, whatever you feel is your business. But to me, it's like, I don't have a relationship with this person. So, um, and it was like a conscious decision that this lady did not want to have a relationship with, um, you know, like me and my brother who are her grandkids. So what, to me, what sense would that make? Like, I'm not even trying to be evil, but it's just like one plus one doesn't equal two type thing anyways i'm on a ramp um i hope you like the video and if you have read this book or if you plan on reading it or whatever leave leave a little message in the chat and we could chit chat into the next one bye